Hi, how are you guys doing? And welcome back to Math with Deception with me, your girl, No Fuses. Uh, last time I checked, uh, we were getting into an argument, and now she's trying to test our intelligence since we are definitely lacking in the strength factor. Uh, but so, we're gonna see what happens. And if you guys like this video or this series, then please don't hesitate to destroy that like and subscribe button. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'm sure I put it away somewhere here. With her head thrust into her luggage, all I can see is her butt in the air and her tail wagging. There it is, hmm, let's see how he deals with this. Poon produces a large notebook from her bags, thrusting it towards me with a smug smile. What's this? Puzzled eye glance between the plain looking notebook and Poon's expected face. Poon just smiles, wiggling the notebook. Does she want me to read it? I go ahead and take it from her, opening it to the first page. A complete of numbers and symbols greets me there, all seemingly lined up. Mathematical formula, huh? They all look to be fairly simple or dramatic, in cute stylized handwriting. Each unfinished equation has a space beneath to write in an answer, and the opposite page, strangely adorable animals, give hints to how the problem each solves. Flipping through the rest of the notebook, I find more of the same equations and cute drawings. I see, so it's a written workbook. They're all fairly simple problems, but the book itself is handmade, painstakingly handwritten piece. What do you think? I've been learning high level meds from this book. I glance at her from the page to find Quinn puffing out her chest proudly. He's over here looking like these are pretty simple formulas. And she's like, I worked hard of it. She said, I worked hard of it and now I know math like a genius. And he's just like, oh, my poor child. <laughs> See, if you can work through these problems, eh? The tough stuff. I don't really get why, but if she wants me to try solving these, let's see. 43, huh? 1,338, 6,084, 55. Wait, wait, Haku, are you? Hmm, what? You don't want me to solve these? I, I did, but were those answers? Are you doing all this just in your head? Well, they're all pretty simple. <laughs> you killed her! <laughs> oh no, that face. <laughs> it can't be. Problems are that difficult. They're supposed to be of that difficulty? That's a bit much. This is pretty easy material. Anyone would be able to solve these, or is my perception just different from hers? So what now? Want me to keep going? Huh? Ah, uh, hold on. Now I'm right through her bags once more and retrieves a long, sick like object. A pencil? First 43. Oh my gosh, she's right there. She's over here cheating. Hey, how about the next one? Then possibly take the notes, but it seems like she's in giving for some reason. Next one, uh, 500, um, 5,126. 871. And then, uh, 19,006. Huh? Hold on a sec. It twitches. What is it? Isn't this work for yours? Like, so you can study from it? Um, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> was that the sound of her eyes turning away? <laughs> that was too funny. <laughs> Why did they put that in here? Quinn glanced away, turning her head slowly like a rusty gear. I thought as much. Ugh. What's the point of making others solve the problems for you if you're supposed to be learning? It's not a problem. I could easily solve these if I put my mind to it. Quinn removes her hand from the book, revealing a few red circle problems and more than a few X's. Oh, that's enough for today. Quinn hurriedly stuffs the notebook away, changing the subject subtle much. Free battle has been added to the system menu. Free battle. You can replay, oh, oh, so if I want to replay a battle for whatever reason, I can do so. All right, nice.
I mean, you're not giving much of a choice in my destination. You, you've only given me one option. Dining hall. Let's see. Ah. Uh. Goop. Hmm, that's good. Spicy over there? Come on, it's delicious. You're not gonna eat? Right. It got dark outside while we were busy organizing our belongings. At some point, a tails and Ron wafted into the room from somewhere else in the inn. The scent tickled my nose and made my stomach growl with hunger. Chuckling, Kuon led me downstairs where we found a group of locals drinking and dying merrily. Now a staggering number of dishes are lined up on the table before us. Jeez, what's with these portions though? The plates are all stacked so high with food. They threatened to topple. It's way too much for two. Hell, there's enough food crying the table for at least ten people. I blitz to my downfall estate. Kuan reaches for the plate and comes happily to herself. Hmm, I'll try this one and this one next. She piles heaps of meat and meffles onto onto some kind of thin dough, wraps it all neatly. Hmm. The rat bursting at the seams with ingredients disappears in just a few bites. Who opens her mouth wide and stuffs her face, but somehow she makes it look refined. Don't hold back, okay? We're celebrating and you're making it back here safely. Well, I'm happy to hear you say that. This all looks like quite a feast. I hope she didn't spurge for my sake. Well, if you aren't eating, I'll just help myself to the rest. Huh? Ah! Munch of lunch. Did she say the rest? Alright, did you not know how to eat this haku? Um, well, not really. I nod unconsciously, not quite able to tell her I'm more taken back by the sheer quantity. Well then, let me teach you. From the plate in front of her, Kuan grabs another one of the thin sheets of flatbread. First, we get the amen skin ready. This? I pick up another of the flimsy doughy sheets, watching it pillow plainly around my fingers. She called it a skin, but it looks like it's brown, bounded, and baked like flatbread. I'm sure animal hide. That green we called her was, I mean, oh my god, I butchered that word, I'm so sorry. It turns into this after you grind into flour and bake it. You put ingredients like cooked meats and vegetables, fish, and you know, then wrap it all up. So a burrito, or a wrap. One finish, our mui, dip it in your favorite sauce and enjoy. Kuin hands me the, I mean, I mean oh my, I keep butchering that word, uh, red bundle of food. Talk about extra large. The skin looks like it's fit to burst. She definitely overstuffed this. The staring to definitely at mine, Quinn makes another just like it and digs in. I swear I take a careful bite, cautious not to let in the filling spill. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. A little heavy on the seasoning, but still good. It tastes even better since it's a free meal. <laughs> I may not look at it, but I'm pretty. Good cook. All you did was stuff a burrito. Queen smells proudly. I don't think we're being able to wrap things up in a skin makes you a cook, but whatever you say. I managed to bite my tongue before the quip actually saves my throat. It's certainly delicious, but I'm getting parched. Probably the seasoning. Is there anything to drink? Here. As over in my mind, Queen slides a bowl of amber colored liquid toward me. Oh, thanks. I take an experimental sip, tasting the beverage. It has an odd citrusy flavor, but it's not overpowering. In fact, it cleanses my palate pretty nicely. Is this alcohol? Uh huh. It's a drink you'll find a lot in this region. It's not too strong, so it's so it's drunk with meals usually. Interesting. It almost seems like beer, but that citrus taste distinguishes it from standard lager. I like it. It bubbles and the sourness goes nicely with the heavy seasoning on these dishes. We don't really have it in my homeland, so it's still novelty to me. Homeland? You're not from around here then? Hmm, yeah, I'm across the sea. It was a rough voyage getting here though. I see. I don't know what part of the world you're from, but that sounds like it's far away. Uh-huh. I've traveled a lot since I was a child, but this is the first time I've been out this far on my own. It was also my first time traveling by ship, so getting that new experience was fun in the end. We did have a few close calls though. What, like you got caught in a storm or something? Lynn puts a finger to her lips, smiling proudly. It wasn't a storm, but we ran into something just 
That is scared. Can you guess another monster? Something close to a storm, like a tsunami or a giant whirlpool? Too bad, both wrong. The correct answer is giant sea monster attack. Um, it happened on a calm sunny day, and the ship had a lot of people packed bellow decks. The water was peaceful, so I thought I'd go above the water of the waves, but when I got up there, I was just in time to see a giant arms more like legs emerge and seize the ship. I tried to pull us beneath the surface, drowning anyone who fell off. It was awful, really. That's nowhere like the storm. Hold on. You're just pulling my leg, aren't you? This is some kind of joke. A joke? Going to tilt her head Never mind. I'm starting to get a headache trying to wrap my head around this. Time to change the subject. So I'm curious. Why are you traveling? Do you have some goal way out here? Some objective? Objective. But it's hard to talk about. You don't have to. Oh no, nothing like that. I just haven't had to, well, put into words before. I just want to take myself to as many new places as I can, I think. Like there's a wanderlust deep inside me, whispering to my heart, you know? It wants to go to places it's never been, have experiences it's never had, try new things. So long as there are new places for me to take in like that, I'll continue my travels, I suppose. Quinn smiles sweetly, and I have to admit, the beauty of the charms me a little. Drinks that can only be found here, foods that only could hear seeing the sights, traveling the open road, wandering free world with no one to lecture me or force me to study. Yeah, she's definitely sheltered. She probably got so cooped up into her home or whatever she was at, and then she was like, when I am able to, I'm getting out of here, and I'm not coming back for a hot minute. That's pretty much what's happening here. Because she knows when she gets back home, she's not going to be able to do it again. Really, I have to wonder if this lifestyle is what they mean when they talk about an earthly paradise. I feel like the last person will spoil the rest of it. Doesn't your family worry the- At that, when it turns dark and distant. Er, wrong thing to say. You know a parent probably wouldn't let their young daughter travel alone, much less overseas, so... Sorry, I didn't mean. Oh no, it's alright. I ran off without telling one is all. I'm not exactly looking forward to being to the scolding wave. Oh dang, so she ran away from home. <laughs> she didn't even tell them goodbye. She probably just left a note. I'm leaving. <laughs> what? That's all? Huh? What do you mean? That... That solemn face just now made me think that you don't have a family. And since I said, you know... Family? Oh, I see. No, no, no. I come from a pretty big household. If that's the case, then it's... F Actually, no. It's not fine. Won't they be worried about you? Yeah. My family is, ah... Uh, I suppose you can call them lenient? Liar. If they were, you wouldn't be drained scolding they're gonna give you. It's true. They told me I should go where I like and do what I want. One can only live free of responsibilities while one is still young, so I'm seizing the day. It comes with dangers, of course. You can be left to die helpless, disgraced far away from home. But that's the trade-off that comes with freedom, or so they said. How should I put it? My family, values, autonomy, independence. You think there'd be a rational limit to what counts as independence. Oh man, I keep switching voice without realizing who the other is. My bad. But enough of all that. Eat up. We need your strength for work tomorrow. Or what? We're working? Tomorrow too? Uh, let's, let's see. Next I'll try this, then this, and then... You're still eating? Somehow, Kuan managed to put a whole new ceremony together while I was distracted. She eats eagerly. Hmm. I'll give her this. The girl really likes her food. Er. 
I ate way too much. I feel like the food's gonna come out the wrong way if I open my mouth. As I lie down around my stomach, Kuan digs through her bag searching for something. How can she still move around like that? She ate more than double her own body weight. She really doesn't look like she eats as much as she does. Where does it all go with that figure? Hmm. What are you doing? She seems to be in a good mood, humming to herself happily. Hehehehe. <laughs> Getting ready to take a bath, of course. I've just been wiping down for the past few days, so as long as we have baths, I'm taking advantage. Gwen has a dreamy look on her face. A bath, huh? Can't get a proper one on the road, that's for sure. It's too bad we can't soak, but that's a bath. Huh? It's a bath, but you can't soak in it? Oh, there's steam baths. They're much more common than baths with run run range. Steam baths? How does that work? Ah, I see. No hot tubs then. I prefer a good soak, but a steam bath still sounds pretty good right now. Wait, how is this gonna work? A steam bath? My magic, I've never heard of a steam bath, so I'm just like assuming that you're just in there in your steam and you're just like, you know, doing your thing and then you just get out. You should go take one later too. It'll melt away the fatigue and cleanse you body and soul. Guess you're right. Now that she mentions it, I did sweat a whole lot considering myself on the truck earlier. Too bad about the hot water. But it'll feel nice to relax in the steam. Alright, I'll go do that then. Or oh, wait, or maybe steam bath is just another way they're saying sauna. Maybe? I guess I'll find out. Uh, Claire makes a noise that she suddenly remembers something. Uh, um, hmm. Then she puts a finger to her chin deep in thought. Why is she looking at me like that? I still have a few things I need to take care of, actually. Hmm? Yeah, it might take a while, so why don't you go and take a bath first? Well, I don't mind waiting. This looks so full, I don't think I can move forward this spot anyway. Besides, I want to relax. No, you're probably tired, right? Go ahead and take it now. Here, a spritz of your clothes for you. She puts a set of clothes into my hands. When did she put those together? You haven't forgotten how to take a bath, right? I seriously doubt that. I mean, I hope I haven't. Then you should be fine on your own. Don't worry about me and go relax, okay? If you insist. I have a weird feeling about this, but it'd be rude to refuse her goodwill, so... The bath's downstairs to the left, at the end of the corner, okay? Okay, got it. As I leave the room and head left, a long hallway greets me as promised. The door at the end of the hall opens into something like a changing room, lined with shelves. Doesn't seem like anyone else is using the bath right now. I should be able to unwind without worry. I tie my sash and toss my clothes hazardously into a random shelf. At first I thought that was the tub. But I think this might be like how people put, put water on uh, coals to make it hotter. I think this, so I, I really think this is a sauna. Okay, this is their version of a sauna. Okay, okay, so I, so I was right. Hopefully. I open another door at the far end of the changing room and blast of fire washes over me. The bath beyond is spacious for an inn like this. Benches line the walls enough to seat five people. I set into the opposite wall is something like a furnace without an opening fence in my wood, judging by the heat waves rising from it. You probably pour water over that to make the steam. <sighs> I flop onto one of the wooden benches and let out a deep sigh. The room's weren't su suffices me. I didn't realize how good this would feel. <sighs> I zone out, staring up at the ceiling and thinking, the day's events wash over me. I woke up in a strange place, and a monstrous creature attacked me, only for Kuan to save me in the nick of time. And now here I am with no memory. No belongings, no power, no place to go home to, a lot of nothing. What am I going to do? Bah, no point in stressing over it. As it stands, I can't do much but trust in Quinn's hospitality. We'll see how things play out. Taking a ladle from the bench, I throw water over the heating apparatus. The hiss of evaporating water and a cloud of steam fill the room, heating the air. God, I walked so much, my calves are all swollen. 
the aches in my feet too. Ow. A dull pain shoots through my foot when I try to rub the ache away. Perturbed, I lift my foot, looking at the soles to find the source of the pain. Huh? What was that? A loud thought interrupts me from the other side of the wall. What the? Did something collapse? Doesn't matter, I guess. I look right down to the poor sole of my foot. Right foot blisters, some of them torn and bled. Ooh! Ow! Yikes, the skin's peeling too. I guess we need to walk. They walk a pretty long way. Probably better not to touch that. Left foot, no choice. I return massaging my sore calves instead. Huh? Suddenly I get the feeling I'm being watched. Oh my god, it's a peeping tom. I guess I glance around the steam filled room, but of course no one is in here with me. Probably just my imagination. Probably not. Oh well, I should loosen up my other muscles while I'm in here. It's not just calves that hurt. Up we go. Careful on my feet. I ease myself up and stand upright, stretching my whole body. Whoops, the watch cut around my waist is. Wait, there's that noise again. What's that coming from? Squeak, 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 squeak. Some kind of small animal. Who knows what weird creatures in the evil might have around? Well, no big deal. As long as it minds its own business, now I'll start with some loosening up. My god, what are these noises? What in the hell is that? Geek! That thing's making a lot of noise out there. What's with the ruckus? Whatever. Next, some hip swirls. What is with these noises? Why? Alright, here we go. Pick up the pace. Something crashes loudly and scampers off. Just animals family. I don't really know the seasons here, but I guess spring must be close. Loosening up, I sit back down to the bench and surrender myself to relax and steam. Ah, that hits the spot. I mean, those were footsteps. Somebody was watching him. Whew, I'm out the bath. She's, she's all quiet. She's like, I saw things I shouldn't have. Were you peeping? I return to the room with last room trip, left to find her sitting in the corner with her back turned. Come on, I'm out. <laughs> that's if you were the peeper, that's what you freaking get. That's what you get. <laughs> you gotta <a> show. <laughs> What's going on? No reply. She doesn't seem to even notice me. When I approach, I can faintly hear her mutter to herself, Gaze bank it. It sounds like she's saying the I thought, but it's difficult to make out. Come on. Put my hand on her shoulder. Eep! Whoa. Jeez, don't surprise me like that. I'm the one who surprised you. Did something happen? Huh? You had a thousand yard stare and you were moaning like you'd seen something awful. What happened? You know if she does something wrong, she don't want to say nothing. <laughs> Why are you averting your eyes? I'm not averting them. Despite her word, Cohen is in fact looking entirely to one side of me. No, you definitely are. I round on her and place a firm for eyes, but she turns away again. And your face is bright red. What's the deal? I leaned down and put my face right in front of her. She still refused to make eye contact. Said her cheeks turned even redder and her eyes were bloodshed like she's been drinking. Your eyes are red too. Are you feeling... Huh? Out of the blue, Cohen grabs me and tosses me like a rag dog with that casual strength of hers. Ugh. My body flies through the air, looking squarely on the bed. Well, what are you doing? You need to concern yourself with me. Cohen probably... Why didn't you tell me about this? Glenn pulls my feet upwards and expects the soles. Tell you what? Was there something I needed to tell her? Glenn ignores the question, frowning deeply at the sight of my ruined souls. If you said something, I wouldn't have made you strain yourself this much today. What? I did tell you! 
repeatedly. I run through the days of events in my mind. I did grab me complaints several times. I actually come to think, but I never complained aloud. I'd only ever muttered my gripes. Hold still for a moment. Gwen takes several small pills from the pouch at her waist and puts them into her mouth chewing. Okay, I really thought that he was flashbacking, but this is the, we, we just got back to the original position he found himself in. What's that? Gwen only smiles, taking the chewed up glove from her mouth and smearing it on my feet. This will sting a bit. I can't quite figure out why, but a chill runs down my spine at the sight of that cheerful smile. Gwen's fingers work the substance into my feet, paying special attention to where the skin peels. Is she applying a salve or something? It's definitely stinging. Ah, ow! Maybe sting isn't quite the word. It itches and tingles more than it stings. It's probably the mess, but suddenly I can't contain the urge to scratch my itching feet. When I reach for him, Gwen bats my hand away. Ah, uh -uh, no touching. It'll be uncomfortable, but its effectiveness is second to none. Ah, so that's why she was smiling. God, it itches. It itches! That should... That should just be about to do it. It'll sell down for a while, so hang in there until then, okay? So smiling, Kuhn expectedly grabs my feet in tight bandages, sitting in the south. And for good measure, since there's an odd liquor jar next to my pillow. What's that? Hmm? Just watch. She moves the jar's preformed lid. The inside looks to be packed with white ash. Then, nestling a small piece of charcoal in the ash, she lights it and waits for more. Finally, another small black pill goes on top of the lit charcoal. A moment passes and sweet fruity scents begin to waft from the jar, filling up my nostrils. An incense burner, huh? Yeah, exactly. This particular incense is a blend of aromatic and pain relieving herbs. It'll relieve your fatigue and pain in its properties that put it asleep, I think. Even as Gwen speaks, I can feel the fingers soothing my mind and dulling my pain. I feel light. Oh, oh, that's blissful. I think the caution might be a little high. Are you feeling okay? You don't feel ill? No, I'm... I'm good. I'm really, really good. Oh my god, he's high. Getting sleepy. Eyelids heavy. Now, are you feeling pain in your Haku? Haku, that's my bed. Can't sleep. I'm sinking. My conscience swirling away into oblivion. Hey, Haku! Hey! Sheesh! I picked up quite a burn out there, didn't I? But I suppose that's my... Okay, we're back to this. What is this music? I'm, I'm right with you guy. It's soft and a little majestic. Where have I heard it before? I feel like I've... Is she singing? Where am I? No one else around or... Huh? Someone's over there. Hey, you there! Could you spare a moment? Oh my god, who is this? Hey, I'm sorry for bothering you, but could I ask you something? Hello? What's with this guy? Excuse me, hello? Ugh. Ugh. Huh? Is he trying to say something? Ugh. He's not looking so good. Is he sick? Ugh. Hey, uh, ugh. <laughs> What in- is he just crazy? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> D 
did, did this man just explode? <sighs> hey, are you all right? You are burning your sleep. Huan looks at me, brow creased with worry. A dream? No, a dream. Yeah, just a dream. Uh, no way I'm gonna be able to get back to sleep after that one. Talk about nightmares. God, it's because I got a tap of that monster, I'll bet. Haku? Huan continues to look at me, questioning. Sorry, it's nothing. I just had a bad dream. That's a relief. Go wash your face and wake up a little. And after you do that, we'll get some breakfast, okay? Yeah, sounds good. After I wash up and groom myself, I head this down for breakfast. Go and I spot each other and she smiles, waving me over. I raise my hand as I approach. Oh boy, this again. This is breakfast? Not nearly as much food is laid out as last night, but the amount is still grossly excessive. Is it not enough? You don't seem like you had a big appetite, so I went a little light. This is a little light. I, could, I can only imagine how much food is on the table. No, no, no. This is plenty. In fact, by no stretch of imagination is this not enough. Alright then, let's eat. I hold the soup bowl in front of myself and take an experimental sip. Stew vegetables and fish, seasoned pr pretty well. Too bad, not bad at all. And I'm starting to warm up the more I drink. Huh? I can feel my appetite growing too. Here, this is yours. Glenn steps up more of these orange rolls, busily wrapping the food on her plate. I appreciate her thoughtfulness, but even with an appetite, I can only eat so much in the morning. Not that the time of day seems to have any impact on Quinn's appetite. Uh, ma'am, could I ask you something? Hmm? You call? Yes, I was wondering if you have any work available. Whatever simplest will do. And we'll find out what that work is going to be in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And man, I'm just... All I can do is remember her face. I mean, that's what you get. If you're if you're gonna peep, don't be shocked about what you find, okay? <laughs> that's your punishment, because she was dead to the world after that. That was hilarious. And if you guys want to see more of this series in the near future, then please don't hesitate to destroy that like and subscribe button. Bye! See you later!